My dad messaged me one day saying he has found the perfect project bike from eBay. I opened the link to see a carbon bike folded in half. Now my first reaction, not sure how much I like a carbon bike that actually folds in half. Looking online now, it doesn't look like you can actually buy this particular carbon bike without the electrification kit already installed. And considering the electric versions are around 2,050 pounds, yes, 2,050 pounds, I think 550 for the bike alone is a pretty good deal. So can we build a folding e-bike that is lighter than the 13 kilogram bike that you can already buy and less than 2,050 pounds. Now I've ridden quite a few folding bikes over the last few years, as well as road bikes and gravel bikes, and folding e-bikes focus on power from the motor, but because they have a motor, they don't really focus on reducing the weight of the bike. If anything, they're pretty damn heavy. Because of the extra weight that e-bikes tend to have, it makes them harder to pedal without power from the motor, which is annoying because some of these e-bikes, if they were lighter, you'd be able to pedal them much more efficiently. That's where this carbo folding bike comes in. Now this bike is surprisingly good. It keeps things refreshingly simple. We're talking one chain ring at the front, which means no front derailleur. Who needs extra gears? The group set, we've got the Shimano Atlas group set, not too shabby, right? It's like the dependable friend who always shows up. This bike has nine gears at the rear, which isn't too bad. I don't think you'll be riding up Everest anytime soon, but good for commuting. We've got hydraulic disc brakes, front and rear. I know, a pleasant surprise. Weirdly, one brake lever is Tetro and the other is Shimano, a real Romeo and Juliet situation. We also have 20 inch wheels, bigger than your standard 12 or 16 inch wheels on most folding bikes. So we should get a little bit more roll for the effort that we put in. And we also have plenty of tire options. We've got rooted cables that go through the frame. Yes, elegantly disappear into the frame. Now the fold, the interesting part. Now I've never actually seen a carbon bike that folds in half before. So. I was intrigued to see what was going on because I've done a lot of videos on carbon. I know how strong it can be. I know how fragile it can be. And carbon doesn't abrade well, you know, that sort of rubbing motion. So you don't want it to be rubbing or grinding at all. And that was my worry at the join. So when this bike is expanded and locked in place, it needs to be super tight. There needs to be no play in that joint. Without cutting the frame open, it is guesswork how thick and strong the carbon is, but you can see the interfaces actually lock together really solid and you can tell that they are solid carbon. So no reason to have any doubt at this moment in time. Now, one thing I do like is the mechanism when you expand and fold the bike, it has this sort of cushioned soft close effect when you can basically swing it open as hard as you want or slam it, but it would always be cushioned in both ways. Now, when we put the bike on the scales, we can see that it weighs 10, 0.83 kilograms which is not bad i was hoping it would be under 10 kilograms so a little bit of time passed since my dad bought the bike the switch kit arrived and the eagle eye among you will notice that the bike now has a rack along with front and rear mud guards they have been added and that was done by my dad while we waited for the switch kit so they're going to add a little bit of extra weight wasn't accounting for them but so much for shedding all those extra grams eh i noticed that the front wheel had already been fitted now the front wheel has the motor from the switch kit now ordinarily i'd be keen to disassemble and show you the ins and outs but there was a slight hitch my dad had already weatherproof and sealed the entire setup because this was kind of like a proof of concept we needed this to work before we done the rest of the bike the electrical cable you'll notice enters through the axle and that's where the most weather seal is added they do say to have a loop and have the cable come up so it's like a drip at the bottom however i think my dad wanted a more sleek straight in look let's dive into the installation of the pedal sensor with this switch kit first up we have the magnetic disc that works in tandem with the actual pedal sensor now this little disc is placed around the crank arm on the non-drive side and it rotates as you pedal now this thing is basically keeping track of your pedal movements next we attach the pedal sensor to the crank arm you have two choices here cable tie it for a quick fix or stick it down for a more streamlined look the pedal sensor itself needs to cozy up quite close to the metal disc within three millimeters so we need to be quite precise it's a bit of a balancing act ensuring they're close enough to register but not so close that they're invading each other's personal space Finally, we secure the cable in place with a cable tie. To have a cleaner look, my dad decided to route the cable through the frame. Now this requires a touch of scientific modification to the connector so that it can actually fit through the hole in the frame. 
A file was employed with sort of delicate precision. Sometimes a little DIY is what you need for a sleek finish. Obviously, you can cable tie this around the whole frame if you like. Not all frames are gonna be able to be routed, especially if it's not carbon, but we had the holes in the frame and the tool, so why not? To route the cable, we are using the RISC routing tool. This is a small cable, essentially, that has a magnetic end, allowing you to guide it from one hole to the other. Once it's through the frame, you can then attach it to the sensor cable with electrical tape and pull it through. After about 20 minutes of tampering and fiddling, we got the cable through winner next we come to the controller the brains of the operation this is where the magic happens in our electric bike conversion now every cable in the switch kit finds its way to this little genius but the controller isn't just a one trick pony it also doubles as a mount for the battery now surprisingly handy and definitely a sort of welcome feature to combine both of those get them pretty snug as they need to take the weight of the battery and the vibration when riding the base display is a crucial component it's where you'll see a real-time data like speed and battery life mounting it is straightforward select your preferred side of the handlebars and secure it with a single allen bolt interestingly this is actually the sleeker base unit that switch offers though it does come at an extra cost now i'm starting to understand that my dad likes things sleek simple and functional i guess that's where I get it from. Now that we've got all the components in place, we can connect them together. The great thing here is that everything is designed to be foolproof, basically. The cables are color coordinated and there are locating lugs to ensure that you don't correct them incorrectly. For the base display, it's a case of green to green. Next, the pedal sensor is orange to orange. You also have the option for brake sensors here, but we're not using those since our levers aren't compatible. Lastly, we can take a moment to eyeball all the cables, check there is enough slack when the bars are folded or the bike's folded, and make sure everything is all good to go. So we have the bike complete, but how much did this bike damage my dad's bank account? Now, the cost of the bike was 550 pounds. It was 750 for the switch kit. Now, my dad tells me it was an upgraded version of the switch kit though with a bigger battery, I believe, and a certain color battery and the upgraded base display. That brings the total build to 1,300 pounds, no sponsors. Now, compared to the retail cost of 2,050 pounds, it's pretty damn good. They do have an offer on at the minute, which is 1,887 pounds, but we still beat that price. Now we wanted the bike to be under 13 kilograms, didn't we? So time for the final weigh-in. Our target was 13, but if my dad took the rack off and the mud guards and a few other little bits, then we would potentially be close to that 13 kilogram range. But practicality beats weight. Check out this video next for another e-bike review and subscribe for more content inbound very soon.